You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome back to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 750 AM. We are pre-taped for today. Part two of the program can get us on YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago, YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Father Greg Sackowitz along with Mark Teresi, and it was a great first half of the program with Father Luke Camelli and Monsignor Pat Pollard. And we have with us now the second half of the program, back by popular demand, Todd (laughs) Williamson the director of the yeah. Office of Divine Worship, the Archdiocese. And even though this is now Thursday and we taped last Monday, uh, hats off to the Chicago Bears because I know you're a big Bears fan, Todd. And uh, <laughs> they won a good game against uh, the Raiders on Sunday with uh, uh, Tyson Bajet, Badgett, I think it is, the quarterback who, I think about a year ago, he was Division Two for Shepard, and all of a sudden, a year later, a starter in the NFL and wins his first game. So congratulations to the Bears, and I'm sure you were just as surprised as all of us, Todd. Exactly. All of the prayers, mm. uh, out, out of frustration or hope, <laughs> paid off. And a big part of it was hats off to the Bears' defense. Now, granted, Garoppolo was not starting, but somehow we had the, the backup, but still a win is a win. So we're going to talk about with you, with your specialty, which is so many areas in liturgy. But next week, October 31st, November 1, November 2, we have Halloween, All Saints Day, All Souls Day. And it's impossible to talk about just November 1 and November 2, but it does connect with Halloween, All Hallows' Eve on the 31st when... You know, Mark, Todd, all of us, we were little boys getting dressed up and parading around. Yeah. So maybe just oh, for a yeah. moment, Todd, the history of Halloween. Well, it, I, I got to admit, I, I'm not an expert on the the history, how it developed, but it started out as a Christian observance. Uh, it, it was it was the it was the vigil, the eve before the uh, great feast of All Saints Day on, on November 1st. Um, and, and Greg, I don't know if, uh, do you know, uh, have any sense of how did the trick-or-treating start? Um, that I'm, I'm unfamiliar with, but I, you know, in its, in its ancient roots, it was connected to the feast day. Exactly. In fact, I should know that, but I don't. And do you know, Mark, the, the trick-or-treating part? I th- I think Mars Candy Company started <laughs> that. That's right, Re- Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Yeah, they just thought it would be a great. But now here's a little thing. I, I love asking question, Todd. What do you remember as your earliest earliest Halloween outfit? Oh my gosh, a uh, cowboy. How how old? Kindergarten. I had I had to yeah I had to have been uh, like five years old kindergarten. Yeah, cowboy. Uh, how about you, Mark? I think I was Casper. Casper. The and friendly I, ghost. I, I remember vividly. In kindergarten, because parading around Washington Grammar School mm-hmm. in kindergarten, I was dressed up as Mr. Magoo. Oh, really? Oh, Mr. Magoo. Goodness. But now here's even a better story, and that is uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I had Bishop Bob Barron on the program. He was talking about Halloween, All Saints, All Souls. And I said, Bob, out of curiosity, what was your very first Halloween outfit? And he said, I was in kindergarten. I dressed up as a priest. And he asked me, what were you, Greg? I said, Mr. Magoo. <laughs> so isn't that, isn't that amazing how it... Uh, and see how they both ended up. <laughs> and they both they right. both ended up. And so, but now as, as you give way to All Hallows' Eve and into now All Saints' Day, Todd, the significance of All Saints' Day in our Catholic tradition. Oh, I mean, these days, 
they're they're big days in our market, right? I mm-hmm. mean, uh, a great the great feast of of uh, of all saints. Um, technically, it's it's kind of um, interesting. I, I'm not sure how many people might be aware of this, but technically, um, this feast celebrates all the saints who are not on the universal calendar. It was it was it was, it was originally meant to to be a a, a feast that that marked and remembered um, all those saints who didn't have a day already assigned on, on the calendar. Um, and, and, and since then, it, it's kind of, it's, it's grown to encompass all the saints who are in heaven. Um, and reminds us, reminds us of a couple of things, I think. It reminds us um, certainly of, of, of the call uh, to holiness that all the faithful have received. The Second Vatican Council was very strong on that, that all those baptized in the image of Jesus Christ are called to holiness. And these saints are our heroes. They're our heroines. Um, that idea that, that, you know, that we hear of in the first reading from John and Revelation for that day, there was a great multitude that could not be counted, and they were all dressed in white robes that were washed clean in the blood of the lamb and they they had palm branches and they sang over and over and over hosanna in the highest it's it's it, I mean, that's what we aspire to that's what we are called to that's that's our destiny as baptized members of the body of christ it's 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 just a a beautiful day to remember those on whose shoulders we stand i remember singing a wedding years ago and the priest celebrant when he'd call up the lectors He'd say, St. Barbara, come up and read the first reading. St. <laughs> Joe, come on up and read the... And I thought it kind of took me aback. But then to your point, it's what we are supposed to aspire to. Yeah, Paul Paul uh, addresses his letter to, this, to the saints in the communities that he founded. I mean, this is... This is, this is um, this is our better, our our better, uh, our better half, right? This is right. this is the better side of us, yeah. um, that to which we're called. Now, now, and now, I always say, go ahead, Mark. Well, I was just going to ask. Um, you had talked about the saints not on the universal calendar. I think people are confused. Who's on? Who's off? Uh, is there <laughs> is there any thumbnail that you could give us in terms of, you know, here are the folks particularly on the calendar. Because remember, well, some have taken off, some have taken on. Right, right, exactly. Um, well, I mean, we certainly have um, kind of the, the most well-known and well-loved saints on the calendar. With uh, uh, We just recently celebrated the uh, memorial of, of St. Francis of Assisi, mm-hmm. um, it, right? St. Benedict and... and uh, uh, Saint Augustine, um, Saint Teresa, all of, uh, Saint Cyril, all of these people who, um, you know, who, who in our in our tradition and in our history um, are people we point to to say uh, that's that's the way that a Christian should live. But I was going to tell. I think it's very important that when we look to our tremendous rich tradition to the saints throughout history. But I always tell, like even children at mass, I say. But we are aspired and called to holiness and saintliness. It's not just somebody in the past. But I always say there are people in our midst today with a small s who are living saints. Mm -hmm. We all know people in our lives who have so touched our lives, very saintly people who will never be formally recognized by the church with a date in the calendar. But the thing is we are all called. And I tell people we are in our lives we are part saint we are part sinner, mm-hmm. and we are the sinner trying to become a saint. And in the greatest of saints, some of them were the biggest greatest sinners. sinners. Exactly. And we sometimes forget that in our history. And oh, remember a, Augustine. Mm-hmm. What a classic! His poor mother Monica praying for his soul, and she you know, never we, we, gave up. She never gave up, and all of a sudden, the big change in his life, the transformation. So we sometimes forget that you know. And also, <laughs> always the joke is. So they say sometimes saintly people are very difficult to live with. Look at Mother yes. Cabrini. Yes. Whoa. And I even heard that, you know, Saint Mother Teresa was, of course, a holy saintly woman who had many doubts about the presence of God working in her life. But she was a tough cookie to live with because she was very demanding. Right. It doesn't make them bad, but, you know, they're just, you know, we think of saintly people as being 
uh, unapproachable or another realm? Not really. Yeah. So I had a quick question, Todd, for you and for uh, Father Greg, because it's the one time in our life when we r- reflect on saints, we get to pick one for our confirmation name. And I'd be curious, Greg and Todd, what saint did you pick and why? Todd, you go first. Um, I, I picked Francis. I have always, always, always been attracted to um, Francis of Assisi. And uh, um, from youngest years, um, he's, he, he's, he has been and is a hero of mine. And you were confirmed in what grade? Eighth. I was confirmed at the, par- in, at the parish school. And I was confirmed in fourth grade, Park what? Ridge, Mary Seat of Wisdom. Fourth. In fourth grade in those days. What grade were you confirmed in? Eighth. Oh, really? I was in, uh, in fourth grade, and I chose the name Paul. I always had a love for St. Paul. I found him to be a very a tough guy in terms of, uh, you know, a preacher of the gospel, of the way of the Lord. But even as a little boy, I was just fascinated by his writings, but just about his lifestyle, his change in his life. And he had denied the Lord and all of a sudden gave his life to the Lord. And there was something about Paul. So I was confirmed, Paul. How about you, Mark? Peter. Interesting. My uncle, who was my sponsor, is named Peter. I always loved him. And he was a very simple guy, never unflappable. But also I thought, you know, well, Peter, he denied Christ and he still made him the head of the church. So there must be something. And like Paul, who actually was, you know, killing Christians, Mm -hmm. how could they live this lifestyle? And as is that conversion moment. Also, I like the definition of conversion. Conversion is not necessarily the miracle of the moment, but the task of a lifetime. That you are well, always mm-hmm. converting to something more. So maybe conversion can happen spontaneously, like, like, quote, fall off the horse, that type of moment in life. But I think that we are always that conversion to another moment. That's like my think. Instead of being called human beings, we should be called human becomings because we're trying to become That's something great, more and something better. Uh, Mark, take us to break. Okay, WNDZ, 7.50 a.m., Catholic Chicago. We'll go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. And in the next part of our program, let's move from saints to souls. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Nice segue. Thank you. Charity's Glow of Hope brunch will be held on Sunday, November 5th at the Four Seasons Hotel. This special event raises awareness and critical funds for our family violence and recovery programs at our House of the Good Shepherd. Since 1859, the House of the Good Shepherd has opened its doors to women and children who have faced unspeakable trauma and fear. This transitional housing residence in Cook County helps domestic violence victims recover and plan for a safer, happier future. The theme for this year's Glow of Hope Brunch is an afternoon in Paris. Join us for this annual Catholic Charities Gathering on Sunday, November 5th. To purchase tickets and learn about sponsorships for the Glow of Hope Brunch, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-948-6864. That's 312-948-6864. always say how can you spend your day with three-year-olds seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey and how they grow this is a very rewarding job even though at the end of the day we're not the highest paid people on earth and when I have a parent contact me and say my child loves school 
That, to me, I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning, because really you are changing lives, you are molding lives. Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Mother Cabrini, a missionary woman religious, helped shape America's social and healthcare system in the early 20th century, hugely impacting the city of Chicago. If you or your family are from Chicago, this is part of your history. Join other young adults for networking and learning together about this remarkable saint. Come together to pray and discern how sacred art and architecture bring us closer to our Lord. On Saturday, November 11, attend a Mass at 11 a.m., followed by a guided tour at the Shrine of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. It's located at 2520 North Lakeview Avenue here in Chicago. For more information, contact the Illinois chapter of the Patrons of the Arts in the Vatican Museums at 312-534-5351. We're back, WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, Father Greg Sackwitz, Mark Teresi here. You can see us on youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're with Todd Williamson, the director of the Office of Divine Worship here in the Archdiocese of Chicago. And Todd, we're going to move from saints to all souls. Could you oh. start by giving folks a little bit of background? How has that become such, and it is, a prominent, prominent day in the life of our liturgical calendar oh my gosh <clears throat> you know it, it, it is kind of how seamless our liturgical calendar can be so on 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 one day we pray f uh, and and we, we acknowledge and celebrate and memorialize uh, all those who are in the heavenly banquet mm -hmm. all those who uh, uh are are in the the presence of god um and then the very next day, we pray for everyone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, right? It, it's it, we All Souls Day is that day when um, the whole church remembers and prays for all who have gone before us, marked That's with the, the sign of faith. Yeah. Um, all all the departed are are um, remembered in this commemoration. It's it's interesting, uh, Father Greg and, and Mark. If this technically, um, All Souls Day, it's not a solemnity. It's it's not a feast. It is it it, it is the day is is known as a commemoration. Um, it's a different rank, uh, and in fact, the only one we have in the the, the liturgical calendar. Um, it is not a, a holy day of obligation, but uh, Mark, you alluded to this. It's one of the days when um, our churches. Uh, get the largest groups. Mm -hmm. um, we, we all come together to pray for those who um, are our beloved dead. And what I find is that, uh, you know, people really take seriously All Souls Day oh, yeah. in terms of to remember all our loved ones who have gone home to God. And But especially you remember your mother, your father, a brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, a dear friend, a spouse, a child. And and, and know that we are all in this together. And it's just very interesting that at the cathedral on November 2nd for All Souls at our 5.15 p.m. Mass, which all are invited to, like the Cardinals celebrate Mass that uh, noon for all the priests who have died. You know, Is that right, Todd, for all the, all the uh, priests who have died yep. this past year? All, and the deacons, clergy, priests, all the clergy, priests, bishops, and deacons. And deacons, too but also then at 515 Mass, we mention by name every person who's been buried in the last year from Holy Name Cathedral, and we, we give a name to each person, a member of the family to come forward to receive a flower and a candle, and people really flock for that moment. Also, we invite people who have lost a loved one in the last year or even beyond more couple of years to bring a picture yes. and to put it across the front steps of the cathedral and such a powerful photo, that opportunity, you look across the steps of the cathedral and to see 
photos of loved ones of all ages, a mother, a father, a child. And it's so I find All Souls Day that we're all in this together and can connect the entire body of Christ. And now, is it, I don't know if this is, if this is true or not, but it seems like All Souls Day today, maybe it's a bad word, not popular, but it seems to be getting stronger and stronger every year versus when I remember being yeah. a young priest versus today that people, they'll come to church for all, they do for all saints, but even just as much for all souls. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 I, I, well, you look at its import. I mean, it's interesting. Even when all souls falls on a Sunday, that, that super, it supersedes Sunday. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't celebrate that Sunday in ordinary time. Right. It, it, you celebrate the uh, all souls. That's how important it is. It, I mean, that's, but that's, that's our duty, isn't it? I mean, that's part of our, that's part of our responsibility. It's one of the corporal works of mercy to pray for the, the, the to pray for the dead, uh, the spiritual works, pardon me, to pray for the dead, to pray for those who have gone before us. And, and you get that even in the texts, Father Greg, you, you know, this, you, you voice these prayers, but if you look at, if you look at some of the, the opening collects, for example, that can be used on that day, um, we say, "O oh God, glory of the faithful and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of whose son we have been redeemed, look mercifully on your departed servants, that just as they profess the mysteries of our resurrection, so may they merit to receive the joys of eternal happiness. And before uh, Mark asks a question, yeah. and, and one of the most powerful lines that I've used upon the death of a loved one when I'm talking to family is that, For the believer, when we die, life is changed, not ended. I love that line. For the believer, when we die, life is changed, not ended. What does that mean? For the non-believer, when you die, you die. Believer says no. You connect the mystery of God with our lives. And then for the believer, when we die, life is changed, not ended. That change goes from our earthly life is over, but now eternal life begins with the help and grace of God and we trust our soul. Isn't it funny, as much as we like to be in control in life, for most of us, when we take our last breath here on earth, it's absolute surrender and trust to God. It's an absolute, total letting go. Mark? Yeah. Well, and it, it's interesting to me because we worship at St. Gertrude's on the north side, and uh, for all souls, and even the Sunday for meditation, they'll do a song litany of the saints. Oh, wow. And I think what happens is because the music to me is transcendent, it brings you to Christ in some ways. Um, It reminds you life's busy. And even all those that we love that have gone before us, we need to be reminded the gifts that they brought us when, when they were alive and that they can still bring to us in their new state. Um, well, what about uh, music uh, f- for all souls? I mean, you don't want dirgy stuff, but uh, <laughs> what, yeah. what, 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 what would you think? Like when you, if you were an all soul celebration in the past, like musically, what connects? Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, oh, uh, uh, land of rest, Jerusalem, my happy home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, God, uh, um, Healer of every ill, mm-hmm. um, e- e- even uh, Amazing Grace. Yeah. Uh, just these, you know, the the hymns that recognize our um, ultimate dependence on God, as Father Greg was saying. Uh, the songs that point us toward um, our faith. That, as he said, life is not ended; it's just changed. Um, you know, all all of those I think can. Um, stir comfort and solace uh, for us who still mourn those who could have been gone for years, but um, that relationship continues. Yeah. And I find it very interesting is that uh, as you're both talking, if you think back on our lives, I remember when I was a child, one of the greatest things I loved about Halloween, just to work backwards for a second, is that besides getting tons of candy, eating too much candy, and not being sick at night, but just you know, actually chocolate out in terms of too much. I always remember on All Saints Day, the best part was we had a day off from school 
and the kids that had the public school had to go to school. Oh. And we had a holiday. I thought, this is great, All Saints Day, no school. But isn't it funny, as you grow older, we do change. That yeah. all of a sudden now, as an adult, you love to see children walking around in their Halloween outfits and you know, giving candy. And all of a sudden, All Saints, at my time in my life, is different than it was 30, 40, 50 mm-hmm. years ago. And All Souls Day, having lost my mother when she died in January of 20. 20, so three and almost four years ago, that every All Souls Day is a little extra because I so miss my mother. Like, you know, when you miss a loved one, I also miss my father and my uncle and other loved ones, but especially my mother. And because nothing stays the same in our lives because life is changing, we are changing. The day in the calendar stays the same, October 31st, November 1, November 2, but we change. Yeah. Right. From year to year, right? From year to year. And you look when we had the bishops on uh, with Bishop Bir- Kevin Birmingham passing, you could see the impact in their lives, not only Kevin's impact in their life, but the grieving that they're doing, not only for a colleague but for a friend. Uh, and that's all, pa- that's all part of that life cycle for us. I also find it interesting on All Souls Day, as the names are being read at the cathedral for those who have died in the last year, I sometimes have the thought, whose names will be mentioned a year from now Mm -hmm. that only God knows? Mm -hmm. And if someone is 95 or 100, you get it. When someone like Bishop Birmingham, 51, or a child, you're so thrown, you ask, God, why? 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 Yeah. Why? And, 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 and he, sometimes the, the tears and the anger, and so he's so young or she's so young. And we deal with this all the time. Yeah. Well, you, you even look, though, at, um, at the time of year for these feasts, mm-hmm. Father Greg and Mark. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're winding down our liturgical year. It's, um, it's, it's at the end, and, and we're, we're all of the readings, even on the regular Sundays, let alone these feast days, they all kind of point us toward our own our, our own mortality, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about this last time I was on with Ordinary Time. At this time of the year, the readings are all, uh, there's an urgency about them. Uh, the harvest is ready. Uh, you know, don't, don't fill your barn up with grain because look what happened to the man who did that. He died during the night and to what end? It, this time of the year points us toward that. Um, you look out uh, uh, at nature, and, and it's as if nature is dying. Um, it, it, it's going to sleep. Um, it's going to be overcome by winter. I mean, that's it, it, this time of year points us to mm-hmm. the the, um, uh, uh, the the idea of our, our own mortality and our, the end of our own lives. And I like your image, Todd. The end of time. I like your image of using nature because. The days with daylight get shorter, the leaves are falling off the tree, and you see the change yep. happening in nature, but even though it gives way to winter, it doesn't stay that way. Winter gives way to spring, new life, resurrection, but we need to bring the program to a close. I want to thank in a very special way Todd Williamson, the Director of the Office for Divine Worship of the Archdiocese for, what, 25 years now, Todd? Yeah. So yep. God Going bless you. Years. Special thanks to uh, co-host... Mark Teresi. Grandpa. Especially Grandpa, Grandpa Teresi. Can I do just that quick shout out? Emma Catherine came to us uh, this week, and Eliza Josephine came to us four months ago. So we have two granddaughters who have come to us. God bless the Teresi family, and special thanks to our producer, engineer, Michael May, to all. God bless. Have a great weekend. Thanks. every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media.